existing as economist, Bangladesh has ever produced. We wanted to uh, bring some of his colleagues to help us uh, introduce him, say a few words. We'll uh, start with Professor Pardhan. Uh, he's a professor of economics at the University of California, Berkeley. Professor Pardhan. Thank you, Munir, and thank you all uh, to come to this ceremony, which I think is, uh, is a very uh, important occasion uh, for all of you, and personally for me, because uh, not merely Nurud has been one of the, is a doyen of Bangladesh, Bangladesh, Bengali economists on both sides, in both uh, East Bengal and West Bengal. But also, he, more than that, he has been a very good, warm friend to me personally for many years. I was trying to remember when was the first time uh, I met him. I couldn't quite remember, but if my memory is not playing, me, playing tricks with me, probably around the time of the Bangladesh uh, Liberation War, uh, when I think I met him in India. And again, uh, if I'm not mistaken, your assumed name was Nemo. Was it right? Nirmal Sen. Um, <laughs> so I met him first as Nirmal Sen. Um, but of course, since then, we have been together in, in connect many professional as well as personal connections. Um, I've been me meeting him in several places in different parts of the world. Uh, but I think I spent uh, mo uh, more, uh, more time with him when I was a brief time in as a consultant in FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and Nurul was Assistant Director General, is it right? Yes, uh, Assistant Director General, and I was in his unit. So I think both in day and then in the evening, uh, we shared a lot of time, and I, I really have fond memories since then. And since then, we have met in various places, uh, in Washington, um, and, and, and in Stanford, I think, you, you spent some time. But particularly in Washington, Nurul uh, was very kind to come to my some of my lectures when I saw him uh, with some gaps. But of course, in terms of professional achievement, uh, this it goes without saying that Nurul covers the, the, almost the whole range of uh, development economics subject in which I double. Um, in fact, if I remember right, his early work was more on uh, international trade uh, and foreign capital and foreign assistance. Then um, he, of course, in connection after the liberation of Bangladesh, uh, much more involved in development planning and development strategy uh, in Bangladesh. And then after he moved to FAO and then later IFPRI, which is a International Food Policy Research Institute, he became much more involved in issues of rural development, and if I remember right, also food price stabilization. So, here's a person who's really traversed the whole field of development economics, which is really, really large really, as it is. So, without further ado, let me say, I'm really, uh, overjoyed that Vidya has decided to honor and salute this great Bangladeshi, not merely economist, but a person. Thank you. Next, once again, I would like to invite Governor Athirupan, Dr. Athirupan, to make some remarks about Professor. Professor Nurul Islam, Professor Rahman Subban, Professor Griffin, and Professor Burton, and all other distinguished guests here. I would like to extend my warm congratulations to one of my mentors and someone very close to my heart, Professor Dr. Nurul Islam, on receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award from Bangladesh 
Development Initiative. With his luminous career in academic erudition and hands-on practical experience at the senior most levels, no doubt Professor Nurul Islam is the best suited person for this honor. With his extraordinary contribution in policy making for decades, both nationally and globally, Dr. Islam has also enriched the reputation of Bangladesh to the rest of the world. As you all know, starting his career as a lecturer in economics at the Department of Dhaka University, Professor Islam ended his career in the same as the chair. Later, he served in the Pakistan Institute of Development Economics, later named as PIA since 1974. I was one of the members of PIAS, although I missed him when he, uh, by that time he left, but his shadow was always there in PIAS and we always felt that he was always with us. He was the first deputy chairman of Bangladesh Planning Commission in the post-independence era. He played a crucial leadership role in preparing the first five-year plan in addition to his policy activism in fascinating the recovery of the world's economy. After 1975, he acted as a, a fellow in the St. Antonius College of Oxford University and later served as assistant director general in the United Nations in FAO. As an academic, Professor Islam had a brilliant career. He has earned reputation as one of the world's leading development thinkers and planners. He held several visiting academic appointments at deputed universities like Yale, Cambridge, and London School of Economics. His research engagement at IPRI has been long-lasting, and he is still contributing his best peace of mind in a number of research areas uh, in the field of economics. His books and hundreds of significant publications have always enriched the research community. He is uh, uh, very straightforward, very sharp, focused, and uh, inquisitive, and at the same time, abundantly creative and inspiring. Our generation of economists were locked to his intellectual leadership. The extent of sincere love and commitment he has shown for Bangladesh during the 1971 War of Liberation is well known to all of you. He had significant contribution in the area as an economist, researcher, social scientist, and public intellectual. Professor Islam has worked tirelessly to uphold the welfare and interest of people. The Central Bank of Bangladesh honored Dr. Islam with the Bangladesh Bank Award back in 2009 for his outstanding contribution in the economic development of Bangladesh. I'm very happy to see BDI honoring him again with the Life for Achievement Award 2015. I wish Professor Nur Islam a long, cherished, and peaceful life and hope that. Our society will continue to benefit from this novel work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You have to be an economist to understand that you are this a lot of economic development giants in this room. So I would like to invite next Professor Keith Griffin to make some remarks about Professor Williams.
experience the recognition bestowed upon him by the Bangladesh Development Initiative in granting him a Lifetime Achievement Award. Nur Islam is, of course, not only a great figure among economists and others in his own country of Bangladesh, he also has a splendid worldwide reputation based on his published work his service as a distinguished international civil servant, his leadership of numerous global commissions, committees, and institutions. Speaking personally, I am delighted to be here and to see Nero as energetic, lively, and sharp-witted as ever. He is a warm friend, always full of enthusiasm, he is high-spirited and has a charming sense of humor. Those who know him well will never forget him. Thank you. Uh, when we are in the fading from visibility, so to that uh, unearth us and uh, put us up there is always a great honor. Noodle Islam possibly should have received this before I did, uh, but that he is now getting this is itself a recognition that this generation uh, is not entirely amnesiac and in fact has an appreciation and a sense of history uh, in terms of remembering who did what at which critical phase in our history. I have of course already made a long written presentation on Nurul, so I will, we are all waiting to hear him. Uh, a career path and his uh, prospects for a peaceful and stable life to a considerable risk. He not only joined us in advising Bongo Bandhu at a very critical phase, in consequence of which he uh, became uh, active co-conspirator with Bongo Bandhu and figured in his trial for treason by the Pakistan state where we were both uh, listed as co-conspirators. He uh, almost lost his life when Pakistani planes strafed him when he was uh, moving across the border. And at the end of the day, he lived to be invited by Bongo Bandhu to set up the first planning commission of Bangladesh where he presumably learned that uh, being a distinguished economist is not always the same thing as trying to in fact uh, traffic between the complicated relationships between politicians, bureaucrats and a leader of historic distinction. He is written about these experiences, but this generation should in fact be reminded uh, to in fact uh, revisit that. In fact, the greatest award that you could give Nurul Islam at this moment is if all of you pledge that you will all go and immediately order a copy of his memoir of the tale of an economist, not so much because he, he needs the royalties, but because I think all of you should in fact get an appreciation of history and a recognition of a person who helped to shape that history. In fact, if you are all willing to make that pledge to Nurul Islam, he will be happy to return the award to you uh, in exchange. Uh, with these words, let us hear what he has to say. And um, I was actually supposed to read an introduction of uh, Professor Nur Islam, but I think that his colleagues have said a considerable bit, and we are quite excited to hear what he will have to say. So I will give you some homework. Um, and it is that on the conference program on page 14, we have 
a write-up about Professor Nur Islam. Kindly take a look at it. And uh, with that, I will invite Professor Nur Islam uh, and uh, Dr. Maureen Kurtuz to actually give the award, and we will hear Professor Nur Islam's speech now. So if you would come forward and accept the plaque, we'll take some pictures. going to be a very historic picture. I'm sure there are some questions, but uh, we should have <laughs> Dr. Islam starting with dinner. You want to take some questions? Yes, I can. Okay, we'll take three questions. Yes, please. Brief question. Very easy one. The number of economic parameters that you studied before 1971 to compare the West Pakistan and East Pakistan, how do those numbers look now between these two countries? Bangladesh comparison. I think it's irrelevant. Why should I come to Bangladesh? Let me tell you a story, please, since I'm a storyteller. If you are better, then it is irrelevant. In 1972, I told my Indian friend, from now on, Pakistan is your problem, my friend. Bangladesh is a neighbor of India and Burma. Pakistan, for me, is like Iran or 
What do I care? I don't want to come there. I'm not interested. Why should I compare to Pakistan? I should compare to Myanmar or India. Pakistan is not my interest. I have no interest in Pakistan after 1971. So these parameters couldn't, I couldn't care less. Last one to leave. The sheep was sinking, all of them left. Mashallah was on left. Rahman Saban left. But as a captain, I hung, hung around until the last moment and I took leave of absence. Bangabun, they wouldn't let me go. I said, Sir, I'm very sick, which is true, exhausted. And Dr. Ibrahim, who was a doctor, many of you knew Dr. Ibrahim, heard him create. He was my physician. I said, Dr. Ibrahim, what do I do? He says, Don't worry, I'll tell you. He says, this man is fainting in his office, he's very tired, we can let him go for some time. So I got to leave for a year and not think the same things that happened now. Coming to seriously, you see, one word, we became useless. That is the short answer to your question. By 1974, planning commission had not much of a role. Because my inability, communicate with them, or my neighborhood to politics, or the change in political circumstances. Whatever the reason was, by middle end of 74, the, as far as we are concerned, it was not a viable situation, because the discipline that Pakistan broke down, more importantly, in 1973, after the plan was formulated, plan was published in May 1973, we went to see him around that time to uh, Bangabandhu and told him that, sir, we want to go back. We came here for a definite assignment. We are not professional bureaucrats or politicians, we are academics. We came to help you as we helped you outside the government for four years. From I was involved in after Ayodhya case 69. So we'll go back and help you whenever you want us. But in the bureaucratic support government, it's not my cup of tea. He would not listen to it. He said, no, you are committed to this country, you must work. So we already suggested to him that it was not our cup of tea. I didn't have the political agreement and the skill, and the established bureaucracy would not accept this element from outside. And I do not at all blame them. Any of you who have read Henry Kissinger, First volume, White House Years, his memoir, would appreciate it. Read this book, White House Years, first volume, his memoir. He faced the same problem. Nixon hated intellectuals, but appointed him because he was very well-known intellectual and useful. And when he came, an entire government of the United States State Department, he was security advisor, all ganged up against him to destroy him. No. Established bureaucracy does not permit or welcome outside elements, human, human tendency. Unless you can outmaneuver them, they will outmaneuver you. And Henry Kissinger says he learned the tricks and he outmaneuvered them. <laughs> Read his book. So I was not made of that metal, I couldn't do that. So my utility in the Flanning Commission was not very much high. Rahman may add arguments to it, but this was my reading of the situation. And when the, all the crew left, I left, the sheep was 
It's not available to anybody who's running it. Any more question? One last question. Okay. Okay. I'd like you to comment on the state of development economics and the state of development studies today. What is your opinion of development studies and economic development um, theories and policies to, as practiced and thought about today? As an ex-professor, I can refer you to literature. Ronald Burton should add me, help me here. You know, World Bank published several years ago, it's not this published again, you Sadiq will know, Growth Commission, correct? I suppose still there, I'm not sure. It doesn't is disbanded. All right. The Growth Commission report, those of you I'm not sure, the professors of development economics here should read that report. Very important. So I had I attended a meeting <coughs> in which Robert Solo was explaining the Growth Commission report. Solo, you know, Nobel laureate, famous economist of MIT. She was a member. So he said. You know, in short answer to your question, we economists know the ingredients what make a growth, but we don't know the recipe. Very, very suggestive remark. We know the ingredients, we don't know the recipe. We don't know what combination, what sequence, what timing to use them. So and that's the Search, ongoing search. Now, I think one thing about developing economics, I mean, if you call it, is very interesting now that they are paying much more attention than before to institutions and governance. Now, unfortunately, this is a subject of, you know, it's a political scientist, sociologist, everybody dabbles in this subject. Therefore, economists have to be more than economists to understand this subject. I had the first, uh, first glimpse of this problem when I had a seminar in Bangladesh on governance, when Sadek was director of Asia Department, South Asia. And there I invited the, all the governance parts of World Bank and outside and Bangladeshis to study the governance problems of Bangladesh. I would invite you to read this book. It is not, I am an editor, so it's all right. So you can, uh, only, I have one article only, there are others that World Bank officials, outside academics and Bangladeshi academics. So the state of developing economy in short is rather not very really happy and the, uh, it's a multidisciplinary subject. So therefore you have to have expertise in more than one area. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Islam. Uh, I know that uh, it was a challenge to travel here and be with us. And actually, you honor us by accepting this award. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please continue with the dinner. We have a cultural program at 8.